The world of crypto assets is no stranger to strong opinions or reactions. Fans of the technology swear by it, and detractors hate it with the fiery passion of a thousand suns. Whether you love them or hate them, you can't deny that NFTs are the latest buzz. Many believe the widespread adoption of NFTs is inevitable, but if NFTs are the future, what does the future look like? And what do they actually do in the first place? And hey, Luxor, that's why today we're looking at how everyone will end up using NFTs. NFTs. Welcome to Alux. Okay, let's start off small. What is an NFT? It was Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars fame who once said, If one is to understand the great mystery, one must study all its aspects. He was talking about space magic and the dark side, but we feel like the idea can be applied to a lot of aspects in life. So, if we want to really understand the potential of NFTs, we must first talk about what they are. So, what actually is an NFT? Well, the term stands for non-fungible token, and they're units of data stored on digital ledgers, or what we know as blockchain technology. If that explanation left you more confused than you were before hearing it, well, let us explain it another way. When something is fungible, it means it can be traded or replaced by another identical version of the same good. Money and stocks, for example, are fungible goods. You can have 100 bills of a dollar and they'll all hold the same value, and the individual stocks for a particular company are all worth the same. So following this idea of a fungible token would be one that shares the same value between other tokens of its kind, like cryptocurrencies. One Bitcoin has the same value for all the holders. A non-fungible good, on the other hand, is one that is unique and irreplaceable. Things like trading cards, land, diamonds, or art. If you get really philosophical about it, technically nothing is fungible. Everything is unique in its own way. Even two $1 bills, while having the same value, can have differences that make them unique. But for the sake of keeping things simple, and for the sake of our sanity, we'll stick to the textbook definitions. So, a non-fungible token, then, is a token that is unique and irreplaceable. They're a type of cryptographic token that are associated with digital or physical assets. No two NFTs are exactly the same, nor do they have the same value. So, NFTs are kind of like unique digital documents or signatures. But enough with the definitions. Now let's talk about their actual use. How are NFTs being used now? Because NFTs store data, they can be associated with specific physical or digital assets. Going a little further, being unique data points means they can't be falsified or replaced. Combine the two and you get the most common use for them, as a way to prove ownership or the right to use the assets. Or at least that's the idea. That's the boring version. The interesting thing with NFTs is how they're being used. The most common use for NFTs right now is to sell them as digital art as collectible items, in the same way we do for the real world. And boy, do they sell. Mike Winkleman, known as the digital artist Beeple, sold a collection of his work as an NFT. Every Days, the first 5,000 days, was a history of the artist's work for more than a decade. It was sold through the Christie's auction company and reached an incredible amount of $69 million. Yowza! Another common use case is the creation of NFT collectibles, like trading cards, sports moments, tokenized, and even digital kitties. One of the examples of these collectibles is the NBA's Top Shot product. These trading cards, created in collaboration with Dapper Labs, have digital pictures of players and specific moments, and even replayable highlights. One of these cards, with a highlight from LeBron James, sold for $200,000. The future of NFTs. Now we've gotten to the good stuff, the reason you're here, the ways in which we'll use NFTs in the future. Selling digital art and making them collector items is an interesting use for NFTs, but is that really the extent of what we can do with this technology? No, no. Tickets. 
NFTs One way in which NFTs can be used to great effect is in the ticketing industry. Okay, okay, that might not sound like the most exciting revelation, but one of the biggest issues with tickets for sporting events or concerts, even flights, tends to be the issue of scalpers and counterfeiting. If tickets were NFTs, you wouldn't have to worry about your ticket being original or not. CNBC once ran a poll that revealed 12% of people that buy tickets online get scammed. But if you could easily verify who owned the ticket and its authenticity, that wouldn't be a problem. Tickets could also be made non-transferable, preventing them from being sold, and that way eliminating the incentives for scalping. Virtual Documents Another use of NFTs could be virtual documents. Let's face it, right now you can write down pretty much anything you want on a resume and an employer would have to go through a lot of trouble to verify all of it. But if our personal documents like licenses, IDs, diplomas, even passports were NFTs, it would be pretty simple to verify that information. And not only that, it would be practically impossible for someone to just pretend to be you as part of a scam or fraud, as it would be quite easy to check the veracity of their claims. In the same vein, NFTs could be used for things like real-world deeds are for things like cars and real estate. This can prevent issues of people trying to sell things they don't actually own, like those cases of people finding out their homes were sold by scammers. Gaming Cosmetic purchases are already common in the gaming world. New clothes for your character to wear, special effects for weapons, and virtual pets are some of the things you can already buy in games. But when you buy these things, you can only use them in one game. But imagine being able to take them anywhere you go. That's one of the dreams for NFTs, being able to purchase these items and take them with you anywhere you go, plus being able to trade them outside of the game itself. However, this would require a level of cooperation between gaming companies that we aren't so sure we'll see anytime soon. Now let's look at some of the problems with NFTs. While you'll hear a lot of buzz around NFTs and how they're great for artists and collectors and whatnot, the truth is there are some issues with the technology. Before we can really see some of the uses we've talked about shine, and especially the future ones, we need to solve a couple of problems. Number one, the cost to create. Right now, most NFTs are made on the Ethereum blockchain. This makes them rather expensive to create because of the mining process and associated fees. While mining might have been relatively cheap at first, the cost has quickly gotten out of hand, which leads us to number two, sustainability. The act of creating an NFT is not only expensive, but ridiculously inefficient energy-wise. Mining an NFT through proof of work requires a lot of power, and it just won't be sustainable in the long run. Both of these problems can be solved by moving to other blockchains that are less energy intensive and use other mining processes, but the same cannot be said for our next point. Number three, difficulty of use. Right now, making an NFT isn't precisely easy, and if the technology wants to gain more widespread adoption, it needs to be. Luckily, this is mostly a short-term issue that will be resolved as the tech evolves. The first three issues all arise in ways NFTs are created right now, but the last and probably most conflictive one is the issue of ownership. Number four ownership of the asset. NFTs are supposed to prove that you own an asset, but the truth is that people can easily download the data that an NFT points to. A lot of NFTs are basically more of a status symbol than an actual owned asset, since anyone could easily replicate them without much legal repercussion. If NFTs want to be taken seriously, this is going to have to be fixed somehow. And number five, link degradation. Because NFTs can't store the entirety of your digital asset, just link to it with literal web links. So what happens if those links break? Well, then you own a very expensive 404 error. So wrapping all of this up today, Aluxer, NFTs are definitely interesting, if more than a little bit confusing. The potential of the technology is definitely something to keep an eye on, even if you're not interested in digital art galleries or collectibles. What we can't deny is that as the interest in crypto, the metaverse, and the evolution of virtual spaces grows, so will the adoption of NFTs. Sure, the technology isn't perfect and there are some pain points to resolve before it can really become what it claims to be, but with the constant push from big brands and industries, it's inevitable that NFTs will become more widely adopted, for better or for 
for worse, it's not a matter of if, but when. And Alexer, since you stuck around this long, of course, you're getting a bonus. The very first tweet ever made was sold as an NFT for $2.9 million back in March of 2021. Twitter's CEO Jack Dorsey wrote a simple, just setting up my Twitter, all the way back in March 21 of 2006 that became part of internet history. Fifteen years later, the tweet made history again when it was put up for auction, and Sina Estavi, CEO of Bridge Oracle, now claims ownership of this piece of history.